So right now to the Cowboys and the NFL. Every Tuesday at this time, we visit with the Hall of Famer, the Fox A teamer, Trey Aikman. It's brought to us by Serenian Bay Resort and Villas and Albertsons, Tom Thumb. Morning, Troy. Good morning. Last week we talked about a really a pivotal game for the Cowboys. Let's see which way they go after everything that was said and everything that happened on the field in the New England game. They didn't show out very well. Four games left in the season. Do you have any idea what this team's going to show us in this last month? Do you have any? I mean, I, I, I'm afraid it's going the wrong way, and I, I'm, I'm afraid I see seven and nine. What do you What do you see? Well, for this it, team? it's it, it's it's definitely going the wrong way. Um, but I think because of what's happening in Philadelphia, and they, yeah, you, know, you can only imagine how they're feeling right now. Uh, Dallas is is probably in a better shape now than they were a week ago, and uh, so it's it, it, it is. It is hard to believe what's happening within within this division to even still be in the hunt after all that has happened. And uh, yeah, I mean they very well could be seven and nine. Um, I you know I saw Jerry's comments. I think he's always the eternal optimist when it comes to the Cowboys, and 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 as long as they have a chance, he's going to believe that it can happen. And that's a good thing. But I think that within the locker room, because I've been in those locker rooms when the team has really been struggling and. And you still have to go win football games. I mean, you can't keep talking about it. And each week you can't keep saying, hey, it's all right out there in front of us. They've got to play better. And and uh, and contrary to what some people uh, have said here locally, I do think they're a really talented team. And uh, I, I don't think that was uh, – I, I don't think that was overstated coming into the season as far as the talent that they have. Uh, and, I, and I have the privilege of getting the chance to see all these teams – over the course of the season, and I, I think they're really solid at just about every single level now. Um, they're not playing as well as they have in the past in some areas, and then at critical moments in games, uh, they haven't made the plays, uh, or they've given up the play, and it's been the difference in winning and losing. And I was just getting ready to take off last week, or I guess on Thursday, when uh, I, I saw the Cowboys opening possession, when they went right down the field, and I said, shoot, this this game won't even be close. And, and when I landed, it was uh, 26-7. And, uh, you know, so I've had a chance now to go through that film. But uh, turnovers and, and uh, special teams uh, was a difference in that game. Completely changed momentum in a short period of time and had them playing from a deficit. And then uh, that eliminates Ezekiel Elliott, and, uh, and you end up losing another football game. I think you're exactly right about the talent on the team because if you took all of these or most of these players individually, well, nobody would say Zeke is not a good player or not as talented as we thought or Zach Martin or Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, individually, you can make a case for a lot of these guys being top five or, or number one at their position. So so when the talent is there and, and the results are not, does that go to coaching? Does it go to chemistry that you've got a lot of talented guys that don't mesh? Or does it just go to that weird, intangible thing of, for some reason, they're not making the plays at the right moments and we can't put our finger on it? Well, I think it's all those things. I, I don't think it's as simple. Uh, it's like offensive football. Whenever an offense is struggling, you say, hey, what, you know, what's the deal? And and it's hard to pinpoint it to just one particular thing. If one guy makes a mistake, then you know, that ends uh, that ends up in a negative play. And, and then you put a few of those together and it ends up in a poor offensive performance. And I think that's the same thing that's happened with this team. I do think they're they're really talented. I, as I mentioned, I, I don't think in certain areas they're playing as well as they have in the past. I don't think Ezekiel's been the same back that I've seen from him in the past. I don't know if the if if the time off coming into the season, uh, if, if that impacted him with the holdout. Uh, I don't know if he's dealing with injuries. I don't think the offensive line has been as, as dominant as we've seen from them in the past. The defense hasn't uh, made the plays. They obviously have not had the takeaways. Uh, they've given up a lot more big plays. Uh, they, they've given up the second most big plays in the last four weeks of the season, and this has always been a defense, you know, under Rod Marinelli and Chris Richard that has prided themselves on, on not giving up big plays. And, 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 you know, they gave up a ton to Jeff Driscoll uh, with, the, with the Detroit Lions. And so who knows what might happen on, on this Thursday. But I, but I think in addition to all that, I, I, I think that it, it, it's – I always believe everything starts at the top and that's not to say that everything's the fault at the top, but that's where it begins. And, and, you know, we've got a head coach 
who we know for 10 years has been saying that we're focused on Tuesday, today. That's all we're working. That's all we're worried about is having the best practice today that we can possibly have. And that's been his messaging throughout. And the owner's talking about getting on a run and winning the Super Bowl. And, and they've lost three of their last four. And you've got a head coach who comes out and says, we're going to evaluate the kicker. And then the front office says right after that, probably at a press conference right outside the locker room that they weren't evaluating the kicker. And all those things have an impact and, and, and it slowly trickles down. And uh, so I think there's a lot of factors that have played into this coaching obviously hasn't been great at times in certain situations. Players haven't played great, but the front office hasn't been great in, uh, in allowing the head coach to do his job either. It seems like on the outside, Jerry has given up, given up some of his responsibilities and, uh, he's let Stephen maybe do a little more. The Will McClay emergence over the last few years in personnel. But as you mentioned, the structure is still there. Do you, do you think it's improved any now than, say, five, ten years ago? No, I don't think so. I think maybe in some ways it's uh, maybe in some ways it's gotten worse. I do think that I think Will McClay, uh, by all accounts, has done a great job. I think they've drafted well. Like we said, the, the, the roster... I think is is good. Um, I mean, essentially, Will McClay is the general manager. I mean, uh, he's the one that's doing the general manager work. You can you can say, well, that's not his title, and I'd say, well, that's true. But I, I just think that if you look around the NFL, and I understand that the Cowboys they approach it a little bit differently. You know, they approach it a lot differently. And I think the the, the as I said last week, I, I think football is only important when it's important. What I, I think the, the business of business is, is, it seems to me, is more important than the business of football until game day. And then it's, hey, why aren't we winning? Why isn't this happening? And, I mean, you look around the league, even really prominent owners that are very visible in our game, they're, 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 not, they're not giving the medical reports after games about the team and who's going to play the next game and who's not going to play and how severe is the injury, who played well, who didn't play well. Uh, I mean, coaches don't even know. They've got to watch the tape. I mean, that's a reason. I mean, you have a general idea, but, you know, those things just, it, I think it undermines a coaching staff and it has a, an impact. And as players, you feel that. you start. It, it starts to take away some of the authority of the head coach. And, and it's been going on for 20 years. And, and at some level, there's players that start feeling that, oh, okay, well, this is the guy who's really calling all the shots. I mean, then this guy who's talking to us. And, and, uh, and I used to say all the time, I mean, we had, there's a lot of teams, there's a lot of organizations, I should say, that I think really want to win. I mean, you can question some teams. Everyone says they want to win, but how badly do you really want to win? I think there's some organizations that truly would do everything possible to win. They just don't really know where to begin. And, and, there's, and there's different ways to do it, and I certainly understand that. But in Dallas, Dallas knows how it was done. I know how it was done. And it was done with a really strong head coach who the players knew that that's who they had to answer to. And uh, for some reason, that model changed, and it hasn't been very effective for a while. It's our weekly visit with the Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman, here on The Ticket. The Cowboys at 6-6 six and six haven't played a must-win game yet, and they may not play one till Week 16 or Week 17 because nobody in the division is pushing them. Is that, is that harder for a team to focus when they know they don't really have to win? Because everybody thought, well, coming out of the New England game, Buffalo's a must-win. But it wasn't really a must-win. As you pointed out, they, they even increased their cushion in a way in the division. And, and I guess the second question off of that is, if you're waiting for the time where you're going to flip your switch, you may be in big trouble anyway, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd hate to think that for for a team that's that's lost three or four and six of their last nine, that that they feel that hey, we'll we'll just kind of cruise until we really have to win a game. I, I don't, I don't think. I think there's some urgency uh, with this team. There, it's a, it's a, it, it's a very disappointing season, even though it is true. And I think it's possible. I, I honestly do. I do think that it's possible for this team to get on a run. I, I know when we won our last Super Bowl in 1995, it, it was not a great year in a lot of ways. And, and that team was dealing with a lot of turmoil. And late in the season, we were not playing very good football. And then all of a sudden, we're taking a plane ride to, to Arizona for a Monday night game on, on, on Christmas Eve. And uh, maybe it was Christmas night we were playing. And then 
the 49ers lost on our flight on the way there. We got word that the 49ers lost, and if we win, we have home field advantage throughout, and we went out and put together probably our best game of the year, and then it propelled us all the way to Super Bowl 30 and and beating the Steelers. So I, I, I know it can happen, and I think this team's talented enough uh, that it could happen. I, I don't think it's pie in the sky, but uh, – but right now, this team is is uh, is is very disappointed in where they are. I mean, think of all the talk when the season began, and then once it began, it, to be three and zero, and to be sitting here now at six and six, and each week you say, "Well, you know, we know what we got to do, and and we're going to go do it." And then you lose another football game, and um, it's uh, it's demoralizing. So I, I think the talk is over, um, and that's what. That's probably what I'd like to hear most from from everybody is just that it's the talking's over and let's just go play and uh, and and <laughs> I don't know <laughs> hey, I'm not working there so yeah I get to just talk about it well you know you mentioned that 95 thing we've talked about that too that dramatic turnaround at the end but you guys were down just for a couple of games this is you've lost yeah. six out of nine now you're you don't force turnovers you're minus four. If it starts looking and acting like a duck after a while, I'm just I'm ready to call it a duck after 12 games or just not a very well, good football team. Yeah, I you know I thought going into last week uh, the Thanksgiving game, I said it on this show that I thought it was I thought it'd be a tough game uh, for Dallas. I thought Buffalo was a good team, probably better than maybe they were getting credit for, uh, especially with where their record was. And but I still thought Dallas would win that game. I, I, I thought Dallas. Uh, would win most of the games that they've lost and and now they go into Chicago and and Chicago's got their share of struggles as well but they've now won three of their last four so they're feeling pretty good and probably coming off at least offensively their best game of the season and playing outdoors and uh and with the struggles that, that Dallas has had and I mean if Dallas doesn't turn the ball over if they don't create takeaways and the opponent doesn't turn the ball over uh, you know, generally speaking, especially against this Bears defense, they'll be in it in the fourth quarter. And then now if you throw in some special teams gaffes and a few turnovers offensively, and, and, and then you find yourself, you know, trying to pull one out at the very end. So these games are really, really close. And like I said, those are, those things have, have really impacted this team, and it's been the difference in, in winning and losing. So, yeah, I think the Parcells line has been quoted a lot. You are what you are, and there's certainly – uh, you know, no, nothing wrong with that, and it's true. But I do feel that this team, uh, based on the, the level of talent, should be playing better than they are. And uh, but, but we've been saying that a lot of years. I mean, that's 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 what I say. There's more to it that you can't just simply say, "Oh, well, let's let's fire this coach and let's fire this guy, and then then everything's going to be great." Well, why? Why would that? Why would you believe that? Because that has not yet been the case in a long time. We can go through the numbers of teams that we thought were really talented that have not lived up to expectations. Does that make those coaches bad coaches? Well, it does in Dallas. I mean, that seems to be the, the general feeling. And I, I just think that there's – I've said it many times. I, I think it has to be addressed from top to bottom. And until that happens, I think we're going to continue to, to, to go down this spiral that we've been doing for 20 years. And, and, and every year it's, it's kind of the – the same song and dance and then we get into the off season and here's 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 the sacrificial lamb here's why it's going to be better this year and it's not so um i'm interested as anybody to see how it all plays out here over the next four weeks your colleague at fox jay glazer had a report over the weekend and i never know what to do with these sources reports but he says that garrett has to win the super bowl or he's out as the cowboys head coach would would Jerry really fire Garrett if they got to the Super Bowl and lost? I, 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 find, I find that hard I to would. believe. Yeah, I do too because I don't think it's what he wants to do. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I honestly don't believe Jerry. I think it's. I think he so badly wants Jason to do enough so that he can keep his job. And I and I believe that. I think you could maybe even make the argument if they made it to the championship game. Uh, they, that, that means they would have won two playoff games. They would have won a road playoff game against a, a, a good opponent, and uh, depending on how the championship game ended. But I, I can't imagine if they were to then win a championship game, make it to a Super Bowl, that that they would fire Jason Garrett. And I don't know what um, I, I don't know what the public uh, opinion w would be at that point. I think that that would be. 
It would be interesting to see because uh, I guess to answer your question, no, I do not think he'd get fired in that situation. I'd be curious what public opinion would be because in order to get to the Super Bowl, you'd be feeling really, really good about some wins, some really tough wins uh, that got you to the Super Bowl. Hey, we should congratulate you. You're being uh, recognized tonight, the Heart of Dallas Award for your work with uh, United Way. Congratulations on that. And I understand that there are tickets to the event uh, left at dallasinfluencers.org if you yep. want to see Troy tonight. Yep. So, yeah, congrats yeah, on that. Yeah. Have a good time Thank tonight. You. and. Uh, have a good call on Thursday night. Sounds good. Appreciate it, fellas. All right, we'll see you. That's Troy Aikman. Me and Joe Buck to call Cowboys and Bears on Thursday.